It's September and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, we're looking at the past, the future, and recent events. Welcome to the September edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Now normally I'd spend several minutes alerting you to great programs coming up this month, like the Master Gardener series for adults, or the Story Lab writing workshops for teens, or even the Metro Council Candidate Forum in September 8th at the Main Library. And don't get me wrong, those types of programs are still happening throughout September. But the incredible devastation caused by last month's flooding is on all our minds. And in times of crisis, your library is here for you. Through it all, the digital library stayed open for business. Most of our physical locations opened on a slightly reduced schedule as soon as the roads were cleared for travel and we had enough staff able to report to work. The Bookmobile staff has visited with flood victims in shelters and centers to bring story times as well as digital access and referral information. The reference staff at all locations have prepared a special flood resource info guide related to recovery and remediation and assist patrons with computers and access. Community organizations and government agencies have used your local library branches for emergency meetings and convocations, and we've also offered programs designed to assist with recovery. And as in previous instances, the library has served as a safe haven for those seeking refuge for a while from a chaotic world. So many of you called or commented on social media to ask how the library fared, and I'm happy to report that we sustained minimal damage to all branches except for the Greenville Springs Road Regional Branch, which did flood. It remains closed for the immediate future while we clean it out and repair or replace as needed. Progress is being made steadily. Damaged books are being discarded from the lower shelves, but we do expect to be able to save most of the collection. Things could have been so much worse. So thanks for your patience and understanding as we deal with this disruption in programs and services to the Greenville Springs Road Regional Service Area. We're working very hard to get the library up and running again. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. Recent events have made people focus on what's really important in their lives, and over and over again we hear one word, family. Whether you celebrate a rich legacy with members of a large family tree, or know nothing at all about your forebearers, or even your more recent connections, the library has wonderful resources to offer. Adam St. Pierre joins us now to explain in the digital download. Do you consider yourself a history buff? Want to know more about your family's history and personal story? We all know a bit about Ancestry.com and that your library has an in-the-building version. But you may not know about HeritageQuest. HeritageQuest is an Ancestry.com product that is available to you from your library and accessible anywhere. It contains several specialized collections, research tips, and U.S. maps as they've changed over the years to help your search. And one of the most popular and sought-after collections is the Periodical Source Index, or PERSI, as it's known. PERSI is a subject index to genealogical and historical societies, journals, newsletters, and magazines. Those societies actively create indexes, articles, abstracts, and facsimiles of all types of genealogical records from court records to historical events, and even fa family Bibles. And it's all free with just your library card. To check out Heritage Quest, head over to the digital library page at ebrpl.com. Let's shift gears and check in with Caleb Perkins reporting in from Beyond the Stack. 
Your local library maintains a regular schedule of age-appropriate programming. We recently stopped by one such event at the Fairwood Branch Library in Baton Rouge. School bells are ringing, and now that school is back in session, you'll want to head to the library to get all the reading you'll need. We're here at the Fairwood Branch for a snuggly teddy bear-themed story time and craft. Let's go check it out. My story time today is um, a, it's a teddy bear story craft, so I asked them to bring their favorite little stuffed animal, and I've got several stories I'm reading today. You want a teddy bear, a kitty cat, or George? What do you want? There you go. Thank you. Okay, Aaliyah. I'm happy you're here. Well, the best feedback we get is from the smiles on the kids' faces. And when we're reading stories, their eyes just light up and they're really into that story. So that's what we love to see. And we also, uh, it's funny for us, sometimes the kids just don't want to leave the library. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived together in a house of their own in the woods. One of them was a little wee bear and one was a middle-sized bear and the other was a great big bear. They each had a bowl for their porridge. The little wee bear had a little wee bowl. The middle-sized bear had a middle-sized bowl. How do story time and craft programs better equip kids for learning at school? Well, sometimes for the little ones, this may be their first experience. Um, sitting in a group and listening to a story out loud. Um, they also learn sharing through interactive activities and taking turns. Um, and also the crafts will help them with their fine motor skills, gluing and cutting and coloring and things like that. Programming like this is created by staff that work with and best know the local patrons. I wondered how Judy picks the books that she plans to read at storytime events just like this one. A lot of times we choose a subject and then we choose books that go along with that subject or that theme. It also has to be age appropriate and also it's good for a read aloud. Um, so, and it also has to be books that I like and I love to read out loud. So, There you have it. The library offers a host of story time and crafts programs for children's ages 3 to 11. Check out the monthly newsletter The Source for the story time and crafts schedule or visit us online at www.evrpl.com. Story time isn't just good for kids academically, it's good for them recreationally too. Looking for kid-friendly activities you can enjoy with your children? Think about your local library. Back to you, Mary. Thanks, Kayla. The Children's Services staff works very hard all year long to plan programs that are fun and engaging, while at the same time have a little depth to them. Over the past few weeks, they've marshaled their efforts to provide welcoming spaces and activities for kids whose lives have been disrupted by the recent flooding. Staff are also attuned to print and online resources that are good for family time. And stay right there, because after the break, architect Kevin Harris joins me for a chat right here on the Library Roadshow. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Thousands of individuals with disabilities live in the greater Baton Rouge area. These are loving people that need extra care and support to thrive. Families Helping Families is a nonprofit organization based in Baton Rouge that exists to support individuals with disabilities in your neighborhood. Families Helping Families serve the needs of individuals with all disabilities, regardless of age, race, or ethnic origin. Our services are free thanks to donations from people like you. Please donate today. Welcome back to the September edition of the Library Roadshow. Now generally, when the library is working with members of the Baton Rouge chapter of the American Institute of Architects, it's a wonderful time, a time of opportunity and possibilities as we plan new library spaces for our patrons. However, architects aren't just there for the good times. The historic flooding in August brings with it equally daunting cleanup and remediation and finally rebuilding with careful planning for the future. 
The AIA serves as the voice of the architectural profession and the resource for its members in service to the community. And joining me today is Kevin Harris with the AIA. Um, the AIA has put together a variety of resources and programs to help our community begin this uh, it's an overwhelming process, but you're there for us. We're, we're, we're doing what we can. I mean, uh, ideally, architects are uh, helping you design the future. Sometimes they can help you, like right now, uh, work your way out of a disaster. So we put out a blog called The First 24 Hours After the Flood. Okay. And, uh, you know, safety first. Make sure mm -hmm. when you go back in, you know, you, uh, there's no... Uh, no critters. No critters, exactly. <laughs> and some, some of the critters are... Uh, as shaken up as you would have been if you'd been yes. uh, in six feet of water or, uh -huh. or, or more in the house. Uh, contract your insurance company. Uh, record what's there, which you don't want to do. You want to immediately get in there and start fixing, but record what's there. While it's still ugly. While it's still ugly, so you can uh, and, and record it redundantly. Right? Yes. And then uh, dry it out. Yes. Dry things out, get the carpets out, and you know, air out the house. And the most important thing is to you know, do all these things as soon as you can, and you will cut down on how much mold and mildew grows in the house right. on the parts that didn't get wet because they were just, it just and right, it's the water was at the bottom up, and it, it, it wicks up and it's also in the air. So we we put this blog out, and it was it was getting lots of hits. It was like, wow, I wish my uh, uh, you know for for new houses my blogs would get that much mm -hmm. uh, attention, and it was over 110,000 hits. And we said we're onto something. Here. Yeah. We've got to get moving, and so. Uh, that next Monday, I started calling the local architects that also do houses, like I do, mm -hmm. and ask them if they would be interested in, in helping out. And they were you know, resounding, absolutely, let's mm -hmm. do it. And then so we began to, well, who, what sort of information do we need to get? And so I got in touch with the library and the archives, uh, got in touch with uh, some friends from state archives. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they were all, absolutely, let's do mm -hmm. it. So I had venues set up mm -hmm. in, at State Archives and at the uh, Baton Rouge Parish, East Baton Rouge Parish Libraries. Uh, and then I got in touch with our executive director, Kathleen Gordon, mm -hmm. for the Baton Rouge AIA, and said, here, this is what we're doing. And she jumped on it and said, this is great. And right. She did her She's job. She's pushed one you out all over the region. And then she, she expanded it. So mm -hmm. we're, uh, we've been in Zachary. Uh, we've been in Central. So you're going to be all around. But even if people can't come to any of these meetings, the blog, tell me where to right. find that blog. Okay, the, the blog right now, it's, uh, it's, I don't know what number you have to get before they call it viral. But, oh, okay, uh, but, it's out there, But huh? it's certainly on my website. But and we're it's, linking it's, to it from it, the library's you, website. You guys have linked to it, State Archives has linked to it, okay. uh, Baton Rouge AIA has. But, uh, and these these are, this is not, I didn't invent anything here. What we did is but we just- But you packaged it in we, a convenient, easy to understand format. Right, with, with the, 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 the uh, sort of the talking points, if you mm -hmm. will. Like when you go in there, do these things. And so we've got after the flood, a photo may be worth $1,000 because mm -hmm. your insurance companies face it. They're, they're faced with a lot of people with fraud. And so oh. they, want to, they have to make sure that right. you really did have these losses. And so mm -hmm. you know, a picture is worth more than 1,000 mm -hmm. words. So we have salvage your uh, waterlogged documents, mm -hmm. things that you can do when, when it makes sense to keep it wet. When it makes sense That's to right. dry it out, right. uh, use paper towels or even ice. You can put it in the freezer. But sure. Th there's, it's more specifics than that. But mm -hmm. uh, some, some very important things you can do to actually salvage your your uh, your own family archives right. and then hiring a contractor. Yeah, that's where right. we all just don't know what to do. Well, not only do you not know what to do, but there are so many people coming in from out of town. Mm -hmm. Most of them are here, goodness of their heart, some of them, are, you know, they're going to make some money. That's great. Mm -hmm. But there are just a few in there that aren't. You know, how do you uh, apply for the insurance? Yes. You know, we've got people uh, coming to, to, to discuss that. So we'll hear Correct. about that. And then that's on the blog and the library website links to your blog. Correct. And Correct. the AIA has its own website. So yes. A, yes. there's a multitude of ways for people to find this information Absolutely. and get to the good stuff. That's right. All right. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. We'll be talking to you a lot over the next couple of weeks, I'm sure. All right. Sure. And Mary, thank you to you and thank to the you. library and your wonderful staff. After the break, we'll hear from writer Chris Warner. Plus, we have book reviews from Aiden, one of our youngest library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Road Show.
ballerina. <laughs> Sometimes all it takes to be a dad is remembering how to be a kid again. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. As an American, it's hard to hear that we have a serious hunger issue in our country. And as a parent, it's even harder to hear that one in five of our kids struggles with hunger, especially when billions of pounds of good food are wasted every year. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide billions of meals to families in need right in your community. Visit feedingamerica.org to support Feeding America and your local food bank. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the September edition of the Library Roadshow. Chris Warner is a new Iberian native author who moved to the panhandle of Florida after working on the book entitled bushwhacked at the Flora Bama. It's the story of America's great historic roadhouse as seen from the inside. Chris joins us by phone from Pensacola, Florida. Chris, you worked on this book with co-author Joe Gilchrist. How'd you come to write about the last great American roadhouse? I met Joe Gilchrist, the patriarch of the Flora Bama, in 2010. In late 2009, I was speaking at the Rotary Club in Birmingham, Alabama about a book I had written on a corporate fraud there, the Hell South story. It's called The Wagon to Disaster. Uh, the Wagon to Disaster has been featured on American Greed. I was speaking to the Rotary, Rotary Club in Birmingham, and I met Joe Gilchrist's brother, David, who just recently passed away. He was a banker there. And David, after my speech to the Rotary Club about the Hell South scandal, approached me and said that I should entertain the idea of writing a book about his brother, Joe, who he said had lived five lifetimes and uh, really needed to write his story. And that prompted me to ask, who is your brother? And he said, he owns the Four of Bama. And I had been to Four of Bama before, but I really knew little about it. What was the most interesting character you learned about during your research of the Four of Bama? You know, that's a really difficult question because the Four of Bama is a menagerie of characters. It's a uh, confluence of characters from all over the world, predominantly all over the Deep South. You know, the most interesting character, I guess, would have to be Joe Gilchrist because he created the Florida Bama and he uh, was the person behind it that really made it happen. So I would have to say Joe. Joe, uh, what makes him interesting is that he doesn't think like everyone else. He certainly is always thinking outside of the box, but over time, I think many people have come to understand Joe's mantra in life, which is the principal business of life is to enjoy it. The sad thing is most people never do. Joe Gilchrist was the creator of Flora Bama. What was it like to collaborate on this book with him? It was a lot of fun. I uh, got a camper in Perdido Key and put it over by the bay, uh, Perdido Bay on a lot that Joe had, which gave me a place to stay when I was out here near the beach. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I met uh, so many new people. This area that I live in now, Perdido Key, is really a little island. And island life is much different from life in other towns and cities in the Deep South. So uh, it was a lot of fun because I got to live in a pretty place, uh, listen to music all the time, and meet interesting people from all over the country and the world. Tell us about some of your other book projects that you've completed. One of my more popular books, is the Tailgater's Guide to SEC Football. Many people uh, I know in the Deep South are <laughs> enthralled by college football. And I wrote a book about Southeastern Conference football that's uh, quite popular. Uh, it's been featured on the History Channel, on a documentary about tailgating. Um, it's got a history of college football in the South with links to the Civil War, why we so adequately describe culturally the college football. Uh, that is an interesting book. Uh, other books I have written, uh, I mentioned the Hell South book, The Wagon to Disaster, the official title of that. Um, that is about the corporate fraud in Birmingham. I mentioned that. I have uh, a number of other books that I've completed. 
The Floribama Lounge Oyster Bar and Gift Shop is located in Perdido Key, Florida, just a four-hour ride from Baton Rouge. The next time you're heading east on I-10, stop in and say hello to the great people there. And you can check out the latest on Chris Warner's books at your local East Baton Rouge Parish Library. We've also checked in with Aiden, one of our younger patrons, to find out what he's reading. Hello, my name is Aiden. I am seven years old, and my favorite book is Vampires. Vampires have long been terrifying undead creatures of the night. The story is about vampires, how, how you become a vampire, and how vampires suck blood and different kind of vampires. You get bitten by a vampire, and then you get you get all sleepy and you don't feel good. Vampires in today, in today's book and movies are awesome, are often handsome men or beautiful women. You know when you do like dress up, you dress up for Halloween and you go get candy. You have done that before? Hmm. Well, when you do, when you're older and you do that, what are you gonna dress up? Hmm. I would probably get in my Superman suit. Who brings you to the library? My mom brings me to the library. How often does she bring you? Like a lot. I like coming to the library because you because you can take books to your house with the library and wherever you want and you can get on the computer and play games. Thanks, Aiden. We like to think that we know what kids like to read, but it's great to hear it straight from the source. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Roadshow. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. Your whole world changes in an instant. That's what happened to me the day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. My name is Melissa Easton, and I'm head of the Special Collections Department at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library, located on the second floor of the main library at Goodwood, where Baton Rouge history comes alive. Today we have a selection from the Baton Rouge Room Archives Rare Bookshelf. A Child Likes is a unique book by Baton Rouge artist and civic activist Adelaide Brent and her daughter Joanna. Published in 1971, this book is number 190 of a limited edition of 200. The original silk screen drawings were hand printed by Ms. Brent, Myrtle Kerr, and Bill Beatty of the Independent Blotter Press in Denham Springs. The book is a series of 38 prints designed by Adelaide, interspersed with prose written by Joanna that focuses on the magical experience of childhood. Here you can see the bold prints apropos of the early 1970s design style. Brent was director of the Louisiana Arts and Sciences Center from 1962 to 1980, and all proceeds from the publication of this book went to the museum. She was also a longtime consultant for the Gifted and Talented program of the Louisiana Department of Education. You can still find many of her works throughout Baton Rouge, including delightful murals at the Catholic Life Center and beautiful stained glass at several area churches. See this and many other artifacts of historical significance at the Baton Rouge Room Archive located inside the Special Collections Department in the Main Library at Goodwood, where Baton Rouge history comes alive. You're watching the September edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. Recent events have really made people think about history and what's important to them. Since pretty much everyone in the capital region knows someone who's been affected by the flooding, the staff of the Baton Rouge Room are not only scheduling programs and workshops to help out, but they've also created a special flood-related resource info guide on how to preserve and conserve your family treasures. 
Many of us have been dealing with the traumatic after effects of life after the great flood of 2016. I'm hard pressed to find a fellow Louisianian that has not been touched in some way by the storm. Consequently, one of my favorite comedian actors passed away this month, Mr. Gene Wilder. So turning my pages has been a hard fought war. I decided to try and focus on something fun and whimsical in tribute to Wilder's life. I decided to revisit one of my favorite childhood stories, Charlie and the Chocolate factory. The story was originally inspired by Roald Dahl's experience of chocolate companies during his school days. Cadbury would often send test packages to the school children in exchange for their opinions on the new products. At that time, around the 1920s, Cadbury and Roundtrees were England's two largest chocolate makers, and they each often tried to steal trade secrets by sending spies posing as employees into the other's factory. Because of this, both companies became highly protected of their chocolate making process. It was a combination of this secrecy and the elaborate, often gigantic machines in the factory that inspired Dahl to write the story. The book itself is a fantasy-filled romp where a young boy, Mr. Charlie Bucket, wins a tour through the most magnificent chocolate factory in the world, led by the world's most unusual candy maker, Willy Wonka. The original film adaptation in 1971 features Gene Wilder in the titular role as Willy Wonka. Also on my list this month was Catherine Coulter's latest release, Insidious. Debuting as number one on the thriller list, Coulter continues to reign supreme with a Another FBI thriller. Sherlock and Savage are called in when Venus Ramison, famous 80-year-old billionaire entrepreneur, suspects that she's been poisoned by one of her family members. We get to meet all of the family, including the, the black sheep, who has some insta-love with the very own Delcy. A character we have met in a previous thriller, and of course, there is a B story with special agent Cam Whittier, who is traveling to Los Angeles to help deal with the serial killer who's been slicing the throats of young actresses. I'm really hoping that we get to see more of Cam and a bit more of Coulter st straying a bit from the FBI thriller formula that was starting to get a bit tedious. I'm shocked Hollywood hasn't jumped on Coulter's suspense novels yet. If I were casting this film as a movie, it would not have been rated safe for theaters. And that's how the page turns. And now for today's contest, visit the library Facebook page at facebook.com slash EBRPL and tell me, or better, show me. What book did you save from the flood? That facebook.com slash EBRPL. And while you're there, enjoy. We are not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow next month? The third annual Baton Rouge Mini Maker Fair takes over the main library at Goodwood on Saturday, October 8th. There is literally something for everyone to see and do. And all free, of course. Last year, people came at 10 in the morning and stayed till closing. So be sure and wear your comfortable shoes. We've got some awesome events planned next month. Tune in, I'll take you there. Coming next month, I'll share another digital resource with you. And I'll be getting ready for the Louisiana Book Festival. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System is open seven days a week at each and every one of our branches, plus 24 seven on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. Let's have a roll.